Welcome to She Considers a Field podcast with coach, encourager, and fellow entrepreneur and homeschooling mama of four, Anna McLaughlin. As a homeschooling entrepreneur, you are uniquely positioned to impact the kingdom of God, both deep through your investment in your children and wide through your business. And yet guilt, frustration, and overwhelm can hold you back from all that God has for you. Come with me on a journey to walk in deeper peace, purpose, and joy, because God has given you a legacy to build, and I'm here to help you enjoy the ride. Hello, and welcome to the third episode of She Considers a Field podcast. I don't know how long I'm going to be counting, but I'm for sure going to keep on going for right now because it is just such a blessing to get to be with you guys, to get to talk to you and encourage you on this journey of homeschooling and motherhood and entrepreneurship and all of the hats that I know you guys are wearing. Okay. So in the last episode, we talked a little bit about how we're going to ditch guilt and trade it in for peace, where we really feel grounded and know we're walking in the father's will, which begs the question. How do we know we're walking in the Father's will? This may be well-charted territory for you, but I'm going to go ahead and share with you guys the way that I determine walking in the Father's will, whether I am in his, like in his favor in a certain area, um, so that it, we can just kind of, we can just handle the thing, right? We can just brush it off and say, okay, good. Here's what she does. This is what I've done up to this point, or maybe I've not really thought about how I do this. Um, how I make sure that I'm, that I'm following him and being faithful. And, um, and so we're just, we're just going to handle the thing. Okay. Sound good. All right. So the first thing that I want to say about making sure that we are hearing the father's voice is that um, we get to ask, right? We get to ask. It's about having a dialogue with God. And if you have little ones in the house, I just want to encourage you. It can be a little bit of a trial by fire. I remember over the years when my kids were being born and I had toddlers and I had babies waking up that it would feel like just as soon as I caught a rhythm where it's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. and then I can have time with the Lord. Then my kids' schedules would flip. All of a sudden someone's awake at 6 a.m. and they want to be with me and they are not quiet about it. And so I just want to talk to you. I, I call it resistance training with the Lord. I think raising children is like resistance training where it's not so much about how well did I do it, but how committed am I to the process of endeavoring again? The Lord knows. He knows the years that you're in the middle of, and he knows how to meet you there. He knows we're dirt. He made us, right? We are dust. We are dust that is God breathed. And that's a beautiful thing, but it's also a, a daily acknowledgement of our limitations. Okay. And so if you're in this season where it's like, no matter what I try, I can't seem to get quiet space before the Lord. Let me just encourage you not to worry so much about whether you succeeded as whether you're trying, right? One of my friends would leave her Bible open on the kitchen counter and she'd just snatch a sentence every little, you know, every time she passed by. Um, we did a lot of audio Bible. We did, um, I, like I said, I love that quiet time to wake up and journal while the house is still dark. So I did a lot of alarm setting and maybe snoozing at some mornings and maybe not. I did a lot of praying while my kids scribbled on the, I would let them scribble on my Bible <laughs> because they would see me writing, right? They would see me writing in my Bible. And so one page was where I was reading and the other page was where they were sitting with their pen. And I said, you have to mark carefully, you know, we, we honor the word of God, but I said, just listen to what God has to say to you and write it down. Well, they were two, you know, but it was still, it was, it was building that muscle in them. Same with my prayer journal. As I would journal my prayers, they'd be scribbling on the other page. Right. So, um, so we exercise the muscle of asking the Lord and understand that he knows how to speak to you in the season that you're in. So if you're racing around and life feels crazy and you're like, I'm trying to get quiet time with the Lord, I'm trying to get a moment to hear his voice. Um, he knows how to catch you, right? All you need to do is want to be caught. And so we just trust in the goodness of God. And we, and I love this passage in James one, um, starting in verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, 
He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Okay. And so our work, our work is to trust. Our work is to trust that when we ask him, he's faithful to give us wisdom. Okay. So as we're asking this question, do I work? What does my work look like? Things feel out of balance. How do I handle this? I feel like I feel overloaded. How do I lighten the load? Am I, am I working like my business isn't performing in the way that I hoped it would given the time and energy that I've put in? What do I do about that? How do I shift? Okay. So first we ask God for wisdom and then we get curious and open. Okay. Sometimes this requires a little bit of a tune up around the face that we have on God. Because if he is a God who's sitting back and going, all right, figure it out. Good luck with that. Or I'm already so disappointed in you. You're going to have to earn some favor back. Like if that's the face that we have on him, we're going to miss it. Right. Because we're thinking that we need to strive. We need to perform. We need to level up in some regard. And we're not actually going to receive from him until we do that. That's law and judgment, friends. We don't live there anymore. We live under the covering of Christ's righteousness. Christ bought us out of the life of slavery, the life of ostracism from God, the life of isolation, right? And that's not, it's not like Christ brought us back and God was like, okay, like the, the triune God went on a rescue mission for all of us that are in Christ. We have been captured back and brought into his family. And so we get to stand in Christ's righteousness. It's not ours. It's Christ's righteousness. But by accepting it, we're saying it's big enough. It's big enough to cover all my limitations and all my failings. And so we get to come to him in our sin and in our wrongdoing and trust that he is like, you're here. Now it's a beautiful day because you're here, right? And God may, like, it's always beautiful, but it's like, I love that he loves us that much. I love that he loves us enough that, um, that it makes us stay when we're, when we're near to him. Okay. So we're going to trust and we're going to get curious. Okay. I love, I call curiosity a superpower emotion because it's the gateway to so many other beautiful things. And so when we stand open and go, okay, Lord, what do you have to show me? Where are we going? What needs to shift? Then we're, then we're in an open posture where we don't assume that we know. Okay. And so from that place of curiosity, my favorite thing to look for is that is at least two. It's confirmation. Okay. When you hear the same thing twice, when you hear it from two separate sources, when all of a sudden you're like, I just heard that verse in Sunday school. And now here it is coming up again on the radio. I just had this conversation with my sister. And now here I am having it with my husband. That can be a little wink. Okay. If you look at the totality of scripture, you're going to see God loves witnesses. Okay. He has a lot to say about witnesses in, um, back in the law days, right in the law, um, in, let's see, let me find it in Deuteronomy 19:15. Okay. Um, a single witness shall not suffice against a person for any crime or for any wrong in connection with any offense that he has committed. Only on the evidence of two witnesses or of three witnesses shall a charge be established. Okay, so so in the law, you could not bring a charge against someone without there being at least two witnesses. Okay, when John came, John the Baptist came, he came as a witness to give testimony of the light. Okay, that's in John 1. We memorized it for our homeschool. The song is now playing in my head. I will not sing it for you. <laughs> okay, so John came as a witness. The prophets were witnesses to the work that God was doing. The gospels are eyewitness testimony, okay? The way to be an apostle of Christ, excuse me, the way to be a disciple of Christ was to have been a witness, okay? Their job, the apostle, oh, y'all, <laughs> it's one of the two, it's one of the two, either apostle or disciple, it literally, they had to be an eyewitness, Okay, that's why after um, after Judas's uh, suicide, after he you know left left the left the fold of the disciples, they appointed another man because they knew they needed twelve. 
but he had to be someone who had walked with Jesus, who could testify to who God is. Okay. And so God gives us confirmation. He, he does it all through scripture about the most important thing, which is who is God. Okay. Um, and who are we and all of that stuff? Who are we in relation to God? He does it too in our little things. Okay. He's so kind to confirm for us. Yes, this is the way I'm calling you to walk. Yes, this is the thing I'm going to call you to do. So be looking for that, um, that confirmation, okay, for things to come up twice. You can also um, just, you know, go to your wise counsel people, right? I have a short list of folks that I go, okay, I go to God first, always. And then I go to like, and I see what else he's doing. Like what's coming up when I read the Bible, what's coming up in my prayer time. And then after I've kind of incubated there, then I go to my close people, my people who love the Lord, my people who are doing the thing. They're walking it out with God. They're listening to the Lord. You'll know them because they're making changes in their lives that maybe other people don't understand, but they live before the audience of one. And so they're walking in this courage and they're walking in this, in this, um, life uncommon, right? That was a song from Jewel, like 20 years ago, I'm dating myself, the life uncommon. Okay. And I love that phrase. So we're going to go to our people who walk a life uncommon. And if you don't have any of those yet, let me just commend to you. There are authors, there are podcasters. I'm doing this walk. We can do it together. There are speakers and thinkers and, and, you know, you go look at like the books that have survived the test of time and you get your mentors there. Okay. So there's lots of places to look for that wisdom. So I go to my wise counsel and I say, here's what I feel like the Lord's leading me into. And I say like, what, you know, am I in any limiting beliefs here? Where am I, where am I missing things? Okay. The biggest thing for me is if I feel a little flutter in my stomach, I feel nervous, but I feel excited. I feel, um, I feel like this lines up with my past, my history. I'm like, okay, I think we're on to something. Okay. So I've said a lot of words. So let me just recap where we are so far. We're asking God, we're making room in our lives for him to speak to us. We're shifting into a posture of curiosity. Lord, what do you have to say to me now? And as we're doing that, we're looking for confirmation, right? might be in the word of God. It might be in, um, in, uh, kind of random places, right? Like that commercial totally talk to what I'm working through right now. It might be other people. Okay. Listen, mama, with as many different things as you're juggling, I'll bet some days you struggle to remember to eat breakfast. Failing to take care of yourself not only dampens your joy, but it also impacts your ability to serve those you love the most. And yet you need an easy solution, something that will give you maximum impact without being crazy complicated. Sound about right? Let me share with you my favorite supplement and the only one of its kind, Modere's Liquid Collagen. Since taking it, I've found more energy, more mental margin, and fewer lines and wrinkles too. My hair is also growing like crazy. One product helps me look better and feel better, and it tastes great too. Interested? Click the link below for a free quiz to figure out which blend is right for you and then follow the steps to get free shipping and $25 off your order because healthy, well-fortified mamas build powerful legacies. And, um, and then the last thing that we're doing is we, we get in motion. Okay. So the, um, the natural often reflects or honors the spiritual. And so one of my favorite pictures of this is Newton's first law of motion. I've got a song for that too, from our homeschool journey. Newton's first law of motion states that for, no, 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 no. Now I'm singing it wrong. Newton's first law of motion says an object at rest. Can't believe I'm singing to you guys. Tends to remain at rest and an object in motion. All right, now I can say it. An object in motion tends to continue moving in a straight line, basically unless an outside force acts upon it, okay? <laughs> I'm like, do I cut this out? We're going with it. You are my people. You're going to know me for what I am. Okay, so, and I'm a, I sing, if nothing else. 
I see. Okay, so objects in motion tend to continue moving. We need to be in motion, okay? As hard as it is, man, as much as we want to just sit at the feet of the Father and go, are you sure? Is this really what we're doing? Or, but what about this? And how's this going to go? Get up and walk. Get up and walk. And I take you guys back to um, to a, a passage in the Bible that we we're going to talk about so many times, which is the parable of the talents, okay? The servants were given one, two, and five talents, right? And the master was gone for a really long time. And the two talent and five talent servant knew who their master was. And they got up every day and they did their work. You cannot double an investment without getting up every day and doing the work for a really long time. Okay. There is a, um, it's not in scripture, but a parable of sorts that um, is called a single grain of rice. It's a great story to read to your children too. And it talks about a man who, um, he does something great for the emperor. And the emperor says, what, what do you want? I'll give you anything. And the man was very, very wise. And so he said, I would like a single grain of rice doubled every day for 30 days. And so the emperor thought this was ridiculous, but he failed to do the math. So he starts paying this guy one grain of rice, two grains of rice, four grains of rice, eight, 16. Well, for a long time, for the first maybe 15, 20 days, it's almost a laughably small amount of rice. And all of a sudden, it starts to amp up. And this is that exponential growth I told you about. This is the currency of the kingdom of God. This is how the kingdom of God works, right? It's an exponential growth concept, not the currency, but the the arc of the kingdom of God. Okay. All of a sudden the volume kicks up to such a staggeringly high amount that the emperor's kingdom would be bankrupt by the time they get to days like 26, 27, 28, somewhere in there to the point where the emperor has to redeem the loan, like redeem what was due to this servant, to this man. And he was like, a, he was a peasant or something um, by essentially giving him the kingdom. He gives him his daughter. He becomes the next in line to the throne or the emperor might even step down. I can't remember. Anyway, the point being, we have got to have vision for the end of the journey, not the beginning. Okay. We've got to get up and do the thing because the Lord, he's going to give you a vision and he probably already has done. If you're an entrepreneur and you're a homeschool mom, he has given you a vision of what is to come. He has told you, here's what I've placed inside of you. Here's who you are. Here's what I've called you to be. And then what happens? We get up the next morning and everybody's got the flu. We get up the next morning and we're frustrated and we yell at our kids. We get up the next morning and we start serving in our business and no one's even responding. And we're like, it's not true. It's a lie. It's not really there. I made it up. We don't think God lied. We know better than that. We think we made it up. But we don't make up the big dreams, right? He's just calling us to something that we can't see yet, right? And uh, gosh, it's so good. I think it's in Hebrews 11. I think it's in the Hall of Faith. It talks about Abraham and how he lived in a tent because he had a vision for a city that was built by God, okay? I wasn't planning on talking about that. I'm going to see if I can find it quick because it's just too good. It's too good, um, right? We want to be... We want to be in the thing that God built and God does not build fast. He doesn't build fast because he doesn't have to, because he's got forever. He has forever. Okay. Um, so let's see, it's so good. Okay. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out of, go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promises in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, with him of the same promise for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations whose designer and builder is God. Ah, okay. So that's Hebrews 11, nine through 10, eight through 10. Okay. So that's what we're called to do guys. We're called to look ahead to something that we cannot see. We're called to get up again and again and again and stay in motion. Okay. What was the last thing God told you to do? Do that. 
stay in touch, like, don't like stay in touch with God, check with God, right? Stay in constant communion with the father and say, has it shifted? Is there something new? Does it need to be different? And if you don't hear anything, you keep walking. The master was gone for a very long time and the servants had to be faithful there. Is this still what he wants us to do? Is this a wise investment? What do I do with this? Listen, we are blessed with constant communion with God through the Holy Spirit, but he doesn't always give us, he, he doesn't, like, we don't need milk all the time. We get to step into the season where we're eating spiritual meat, which means that you get the meal, you get the download, and then you're called to walk forward for a while. Okay. So we're going to ask the Lord for wisdom. We're going to stand in curiosity instead of certainty, looking for confirmation, looking for guidance and direction. And then we're going to walk forward, staying in that constant contact and communion with God, being willing to hear a redirection, being willing to hear what he has to say to us. Okay. Make sure that as you walk, your trajectory is, um, what's the way I say it? Like that, that you're seeing kind of, you're going to see confirmation as you walk, that there's like a fruit of the spirit thing kind of welling up inside of you. Okay. I'm using my hands as I talk. I'm like trying to express this there. You'll, you'll have a, you'll, you'll start walking in a becoming where it's like, Oh, I feel more courageous or, Oh, I see that I'm more peaceful or I see there's more joy. And that's going to be kind of your confirmation that yes, you're on the right track. Right. Um, but we don't get to see the fulfillment of our promises immediately, most of the time. So we have to walk with our blinders on in faith and believe that we are where he's calling us to be. Okay. So those are the steps to walking forward, listening to the Lord and saying, am I where you want me to be? All right. All right, friends. It's been great until next time. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of She Considers a Field. If you found value in this episode, I would be so grateful if you would leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts and be sure to share with a friend who needs some encouragement on her journey today too. Until next time, remember, you've got this because he's got you.